hot, 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 when fine weather becomes unbearable heat. Temperatures have been uh, peaking as high as uh, 43 Celsius, and that's 109 in Fahrenheit. And rocking climate science at Glastonbury. I'm taking a tent. I've got the offer, I think, of a bed in the camper van should I need it. So we'll just, we'll just see, <laughs> we'll just see what, we'll see what happens. It's Friday, the 17th of June, and you're listening to Weather Snap from the Met Office. Hello, I'm Claire Nazir, and welcome to Weather Snap, an insider's guide to the week's weather headlines. The recent hot spell across England and Wales can, in part, be attributed to the ongoing high temperatures across the near continent. But while temperatures here peaked into the low 30s this week, spare a thought for our continental neighbours, who face temperatures running into the 40s. To find out more, I spoke to Paul Hutchins of the Met Office Global Guidance Unit. Paul, first of all, tell me currently what the setup is across Spain, Portugal and France. Yes, we've got a, a weather system at the moment across the Atlantic, which means that we've been dragging up air from uh, from North Africa really since uh, since last weekend. And we've also been building quite a significant area of high pressure. And so the, the combination of high pressure and warmer air from North Africa has led to a heat wave developing across uh, Spain and Portugal really since the weekend. Can you give me some numbers? How, how hot has it been? Yes, the temperatures have been uh, peaking as high as uh, 43 Celsius, and that's 109 in Fahrenheit. Just to give you uh, an idea of how extreme those temperatures are, Claire, usually in places like Seville, we'd expect a high temperature in mid-June of about 33 Celsius. So it's about 10 Celsius above average and very, very close to record levels for June. How about along the coast in Spain and Portugal? Is it a little fresher there? Yes, it has been. Uh, places like Malaga, uh, Barcelona, uh, has been more sort of down into the very low 30s. But even that's probably about five Celsius higher than what it should be in uh, mid-June. And this heat has moved northwards and France is suffering as well. That's right. In the last few days, we've seen temperatures starting to, to creep up across France. And in fact, the peak of the heat wave in France, it looks like it's going to be Saturday. And that's when they could see temperatures um, reaching 40 or 41 Celsius. Are we talking central southern France here or the north as well? Certainly central uh, southwest France, uh, somewhere like Bordeaux, for instance, I think could well see 41 Celsius, which again would be very close to a record high temperature for June. So for people travelling across to France or further south to Iberia, when is this heat going to wane? Well, if you don't like the heat, the good news is that we are going to see a cold front move in from the Atlantic through the weekend. So it looks like for Spain, things will start to become more normal with regards to temperatures through Saturday. And then for, for Spain, for France, sorry, it will be uh, through Monday and we'll see temperatures come back down into, you know, the, the sort of average for the time of year. So we'll be looking at in the interior of Spain, temperatures in the, in the low 30s, around the coast in the mid 20s and the mid 20s also for France as well. Met Office Global Guidance Meteorologist Paul Hutchins. In other global weather news, red alerts are in force across northeast India, particularly Assam, Bhutan, together with parts of Bangladesh, Myanmar and Nepal, where monsoon rains have intensified. 1,000 millimetres of rain are expected over the next five days. And although this region always has to deal with intense downpours at this time of year, there are major concerns for communities impacted by flash flooding and landslides. Climate science over the past decade has become far more interdisciplinary, spilling over into the realms of finance, construction, agriculture and the arts. The famous Glastonbury Festival hosts all manner of marquees and stages, featuring all kinds of art, from dance to drama and, of course, music. After an extended hiatus due to Covid restrictions, Glastonbury is back and this year's festival will include a team from the Met Office offering not only information on climate change, but a little music as well. Here's scientist and musician Matt Palmer. 
my name is Matt Palmer. I lead C level research at the Met Office Hadley Centre, and I'm the guitar player, singer, and songwriter in the Matt Palmer Band. At this year's Glastonbury, there's a brand new science futures area which the Met Office is having quite a big role in. This new science area is in the Greenfields area. For the first time, we've got our own big top tent, which is called the Futurarium. There'll be some art exhibits there and there'll be a small performance stage where there will be science related arts. The Met Office representatives there will be talking about the various aspects of climate change. So that's surface temperature rise. We'll be talking about sea level rise. And in particular, a big focus will be on what people can do to live more sustainably and, and kind of think about how they might reduce their um, carbon footprint. The Matt Palmer Band started in September 2018, so it's quite a new venture. During COVID, the lineup of the band has changed a bit because people move on, and obviously it's been a big change for lots of people living through COVID. And actually now the entire band are either climate scientists or people with a climate background. In between the lines you hide in every page I read. No How does climate and science feed into the music that we write? I think this has happened by osmosis to some extent. I've been working in sea level rise for a number of years now and I guess it was on my mind when I started writing a song called The Flood and there's also reference to sea level rise in our EP title which is called A Rising Tide and that's actually to do with the effect of sea level rise on tides and how it's kind of understood that the tides themselves might change as a result of sea level rise. Hello brightness my old friend where you been, where you been, where you been? Lost it's an amazing opportunity to play at Glastonbury, I think, uh, you know, it is every band's dream. Um, I think the other really exciting thing is, you know, merging my two kind of loves, science and music. I mean, I've been a musician probably longer than I've been a scientist, but obviously that's where my career took me. In terms of performances, um, we'll perform every day. We'll do a 30 minute set on the laboratory stage. The question of, you know, squaring climate change and the idea of a festival, you know, being about fun and kind of more hedonistic activities. I mean, I think there's a long history of festivals and, and Glastonbury would certainly be one of these where these are important cultural events to talk about real world issues. I think there's a long history of people being interested in issues such as the natural environment and issues such as sustainability. So I think in some ways it's a good fit. I'm taking a tent. Um, I've got the offer, I think, of a bed in the camper van. Should I need it? So we'll just, we'll just see, we'll just see what, we'll see what happens. Am I ready for people to complain about the weather? Yes. Um, as a long-serving uh, staff member at the Met Office, I am well used <laughs> to being uh, accused of being responsible for the weather. Um, hopefully, the forecast at this stage is looking quite good. So we might, you know, we might be lucky. It'd be great if it was. But even if it isn't, we'll have a fantastic time. It's going to be such an amazing experience. And, um, you know, it'll, j it'll just be so great to be there. Matt Palmer. And you can find out more information about the Green Futures area by visiting the main Glastonbury Festival website. And more details of the Matt Palmer Band by visiting mattpalmerband.com. Well, I'm sure many thousands are braced for news of the potential weather at Glastonbury. Here with the details, into next week, Ada McGiven. No heat wave currently being signalled for Glastonbury, but the early signs are that it will be mostly dry. I wouldn't rule out a few showers occurring though, and it will be significantly cooler compared with the heat at the end of this week. All areas turning cooler through the weekend. However, the far south coast of England likely to still be hot on Saturday. You could see 30 or 31 Celsius somewhere like Portsmouth or Southampton. Come slightly further north and 
you meet a cold front. That cold front will bring some heavy rain at times across Wales and the Midlands during Saturday, perhaps fringing into northeast England and southwest England at times as well. Further north again, and Scotland and Northern Ireland actually should see a mostly dry and bright day during Saturday with some sunny spells, but temperatures at around average here and disappointingly cool through the central area where we've got outbreaks of rain. That front will move south during Saturday night to bring potentially some showers or thunderstorms to the southeast of England and again across southern coastal counties of England on Sunday there will be some showery rain at times perhaps a few rumbles of thunder as well. Drier and brighter further north so for the rest of England into Wales as well as southern Scotland some decent sunny spells but for northern Scotland for parts of Northern Ireland there will be a few showers around on Sunday along with a cool breeze and all areas will see those temperatures tumbling back to around average or slightly below for the time of year. However, the start of next week looks mostly fine for many areas. There'll be some decent sunny spells Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then as Glastonbury gets going, well, there are some good signs that high pressure to the west will keep things mostly fine. But we've got to watch for some northwesterly winds, which will potentially bring some showery rain at times, especially towards the end of the week. And those winds will make it feel much cooler. Thanks, Aidan. Just before we go, Martin Bowles is here with last week's highs and lows. Here are last week's UK weather extremes. The highest temperature of the week was 24.5 degrees Celsius at Heathrow Airport in West London on Friday. The lowest temperature was 1.3 Celsius at Tindrum in Perthshire on Monday morning. Only a few hours later, the temperature at Tindrum rose to 22.0 Celsius, giving a daily temperature range of 20.7 degrees. The largest daily rainfall was at Aknagart in Ross and Cromarty on Saturday. 47 millimetres was measured as a deep low pressure area passed to the north of Scotland. The sunniest spot was Aberdarren on the far west tip of the Thlin Peninsula in North Wales. 14.0 hours of sunshine were recorded there on Friday. Thanks, Martin. That's it for Weathersnap. I'm Claire Nazir. Editor is Adrian Holloway. Thanks for listening. Weathersnap is a podcast by the UK Met Office. For the latest weather conditions where you are, download the Met Office weather app.